All right, guys, we're coming to an end. Um, we're now in the last process of fabrics, which is finishing. Um, so finishing is anything that is done to a fiber, to a yarn or a fabric, either before fabrication or after fabrication to change the appearance of the fabric, the hand of the fabric, the performance of the fabric. So anything you do after at the end of production or during production is considered a finish. Um, so anything from heat setting a fabric, napping the fabric, embossing the fabric, pressing the fabric, printing, dyeing, all of those processes are considered finishing processes. There are certain processes that we do routinely. So every uh, fabric goes through that process during its production. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that first. You know, those are called the routine finishes. And then we'll talk about aesthetic and functional finishes. So generally the process is like this. You know, you first make the fibers, then yarns, then make the fabric. And then, uh, of course, you know, there's a preparation step before you fabricate. And then you start doing finishing preparations. There's whitening of the fabrics before coloration. And then there's coloration preparation sometimes. Then coloration, whatever it is, you know, it may be a dyeing process or a printing. And then you do other finishes and you are done with the production of textiles. Now, there are a lot of different ways you can categorize finishing. We can look at the durability of the finish. Uh, some finishes are durable, some finishes are temporary. So we call them permanent finish, semi-durable finish, temporary finish, and so on. Uh, or we can ca categorize finishes based on the type of finish. Um, so we say thermal, chemical, and mechanical finishes based on the way we do the finish. So if you use heat, it's a thermal finish. If you use chemicals, it's a chemical finish. If you use a mechanical process, it's a mechanical finish. And then the purpose of the finish is important. So why are we doing the finish? Are we doing it to change the aesthetics of the fabric? Uh, or are we doing uh, something to the fabric that enhances its performance? Uh, so it may be a functional finish. So based on the purpose, it can be aesthetic or functional finish. Um, now, the durability of the finish, for example, you know, if you do a finish on a fabric and it stays permanent through the life of the fabric, that's a permanent finish. But, um, you know, an example of a temporary finish would be for example, they sell those sprays where you can spray your Ugg boots and they just waterproof them, um, but then it wears out over time. Uh, or you may do a finish, like you can starch your garments and when you wash it in the washing machine, that wears off and goes away and you have to do it again. So these are temporary finishes, which kind of go away over time by lounging. Uh, semi-durable finishes lose their effectiveness over time, but just a little bit at a time and it stays uh, for a while. Um, let's see if that video works. Today I want to share with you something I found on another YouTube channel uh, that you could see the link uh, below. Uh, it's, she called it the frying fabric. I'm going to call it burning fabric. Uh, so that's the result. I did the little pocket using the fabric that I burned. So um, I just want to show you this video. You know, this is a finish somebody's doing at home. She's taking these fabrics and she's burning them. And the burning kind of shrinks the fabric and creates a texture. You know, this would be considered a finish, basically. And she she's using uh, certain types of fabrics for this. Obviously, you have to use a fabric that can burn and melt a little bit and create this um, difference on the texture. So I just want to see if we can show you how she's doing this. So. so this is what she gets eventually. And it creates almost a pattern. So this is kind of cool, I think. Um, so this is 
considered a finish, basically. And this is how she's doing it, okay? So that would be a thermal finish because you're using heat. In this case, he's using a chemical finish. So I'm gonna um, let you listen to it a little bit. So she, he's using different types of fabrics and using Kool-Aid to color the fabrics. I'm gonna kind of go. So this is the color created and using uh, adding some baking soda always helps when you're dyeing a fabric. Uh, some people put salt. Salt also allows the dyes to be absorbed better. Um, Baker, I'm gonna let that set for about a minute. Now that one minute's up, I'm going to go ahead and remove the fibers from each of the beakers, and I'm going to give them a good rinse in some soapy water. And I'm going to go ahead and rub the fibers so as to remove any dye that's not really adhered. So I've removed it from the dye bath at pH. So these fabrics have different fibers across. So it's going to show you the results. Let's go ahead and analyze our results. The fibers have been removed from the dye baths. We see over here on the left, some control fibers that were untreated. Here are the fibers that were treated with the red dye at pH 8. Here are the fibers that were treated at pH 2. And here are the fibers that were treated at pH 2 at a high temperature. To understand the binding behavior of the dye to the fibers under the various conditions, we're gonna to need to think about the intermolecular forces between the dye molecule and the various fiber molecules. First, let's take a look at the chemical structure of the dye. Red dye number 40, also known as Allura Red. This will help us gain some insight into the binding behavior observed. Red dye number 40 contains two sulfonate groups. So These are strong. I'm actually going to cut this short. Um, so basically, you know, you can see that high temperature gives you brighter, nicer colors, but only for certain fibers. So silk, wool, nylon got uh, a really good color, uh, but polyester, poly S, polyacrylic here, and acetate didn't really pick up any of the colors because these synthetic uh, fabrics or synthetic fibers do not uh, react chemically with the dye, okay? So this is a good example because it's showing you how the colors turn out at different pH levels and also at different temperature, okay? So dyeing is an interesting um, finish you can do at home to your fabrics. And again, um, for the textile kit project that I uh, wanted you guys to do, you can add to your creation by doing these different things. You can do dyeing, printing, or uh, do something like that to create a very interesting fabric. Or you can do a mechanical or thermal finish. Okay, so let's go back to our slides. Uh, so what... The guy was doing is a chemical finish because he's using chemical chemical dyes to color the fabric. Um, but the what the lady was doing was a thermal finish because she's using heat. And we said we can also use mechanical processes, which is like using brushes and things like that, brushing the fabric uh, to create a nap or anything that requires any mechanical action is a mechanical finish. 
Now, the fabrics, when they are first produced, they are called gray goods or gray goods. They have not gone through a finishing process yet. They have a raw color. Uh, but then once it, they go through the finishing process, we call them finished goods or converted goods. And when a fabric is not colored later, but it's colored by yarn dyeing, so the, the yarns are dyed before the fabric is woven or knitted, in that case, uh, the fabric comes out in its or in its final color. So we call it a loom state color. Um, mill finished goods is the term we use for fabrics that are finished by a finishing mill. Okay, so let's go through the routine uh, finishing processes during our production cycle. So our first step was fiber processing, spinning, and turning them into yarns. And then we, we get yarns. And then if we are going to do uh, woven fabrics, then we have to prepare our yarns first. Warp yarns that we use in weaving have to go through a lot of friction during the process. Like you have to set them at a tension, put them all parallel. And then when we put filling yarns inside during weaving, they go through a lot of friction. So you don't want them to break. So every warp yarn has to go through a sizing finish. Sizing is uh, basically lubricating the warp yarns. And we lubricate them with some kind of wax or res resin or gum or a kind of lubricant. And uh, all of your warp yarns go through that lubricant. And then you prepare your warp beam and then you do your fabric construction. Um, so sizing is a routine finish we do on warp yarns. Uh, that are going to be used in a woven fabric. And then we go through the fabrication process, but uh, also during, after fabric uh, is produced, there are certain routine finishes we have to do. Handling is basically how is it going to be handled? Is it going to be uh, as an open roll or is it going to be folded in half like you buy at the fabric stores? Um, singeing is a finish where sometimes, you know, if um, there are a lot of fiber ends showing up on the surface of the fabric and the fabric doesn't look very smooth, then you want to burn off those fiber ends on the surface to make the fabric a little bit smoother and it will also minimize pilling. So singeing is a finish sometimes um, done on fabrics you're basically passing the fabric rolls through certain hot cylinders that burn the short fibers that are sticking out of the fabric surface. Uh, and of course, for woven fabrics, you also have to get rid of that lubricant on the warp yarns. So once you make the fabric, uh, you, you have to go through a desizing finish uh, because any warp yarn that went through the sizing finish still has that wax or uh, whatever lubricant you use. So desizing is removing the sizing from the warp yarns. Um, and that's a routine finish for woven fabrics. And then of course, you know, in the factory, the fabric goes through a lot of steps. There's dirt, there's oil. So you have to clean the fabric uh, and it has to go through some washing and cleaning processes. and. Uh, all of those finishes are actually pretty bad for the environment because we use a ton of water, we waste so much water, we use a lot of chemicals, bleaches, chemical dyes, so finishing is not a very environmentally friendly process. Uh, but you have to clean the fabrics. And sometimes we do biopolishing, which is a um, routine finish, especially if you have a lot of uh, fuzz on the surface, you want to remove and get rid of that to make your fabric look smooth. Uh, scouring is another routine finish we do on silk, cotton, and wool uh, because these natural fibers always have something uh, on them. Like wool has this really greasy oil called lanolin. Uh, cotton has this wax from the plant. Silk has a gum. So uh, removing the gum from the silk is called degumming. It's a finish. Uh, removing the wax from cotton is called cure boiling or boiling off. 
uh, and removing the lanolin oil from wool is called scouring. So these are rigorous cleaning processes where you're trying to get rid of certain uh, oils, waxes, gums, and stuff from natural fibers. And then uh, if you're, you're going to dye your fabric or print on a fabric, you have to make sure that fabric is perfectly white so that when you dye it, it picks up the color uh, uniformly throughout its surface. So we have to go through a whitening process. The whitening uh, uses a lot of bleach. So you can bleach it or you can use optical brighteners. Uh, optical brighteners are fluorescent compounds um, you, if you're using a powder detergent in your washing machine, you may actually see those in detergents. They're like little particles. They can be blue or pink. Um, so those kind of mask the yellowness on your white fabrics and make it whiter uh, looking. So you have to do that with fabrics. You have to either bleach them or use some optical brighteners to whiten. And some fabrics go through a mercerization process, especially cellulosic fabrics like cotton, uh, because cotton has such a dull color, sometimes um, it is necessary to treat it with something so that it has a bit of a luster. And mercerization is usually done using sodium hydroxides that improves the cotton's ability to absorb the colors and it increases strength. Uh, and you can also use ammonia instead of sodium hydroxide. So mercerized cotton fabrics usually have more luster than regular cotton. And then of course, you know, at the final stage, now you have your raw colored off-white fabric, you go through the whitening. So you have a bleached fabric, and then you have to dye it to whatever color you want to dye it. Uh, of course, you know, you don't have to do that if your fabric is yarn dyed, um, but if it is just a raw off-white color, then it has to go through the bleaching, whitening, and then it has to go through the dyeing process or printing. So all of those are uh, routine finishes that every fabric goes through, or almost every fabric. And then, of course, you know, if you want to add other finishes to your fabric, like wrinkle resistant finish or stain resistant finish. Those kind of special purpose finishes are done eventually on the fabric. So uh, once you finish all of that, then you have to wash the fabric and then dry the fabric. So the way you dry may be different. Uh, in certain places, they dry the fabrics by hanging them, uh, which is called loop drying. Or you can heat set fabrics um, so that way, like you are making them perfectly smooth and it stays like that if they are heat set like that. Calendaring is passing the fabric through rollers and you are drying it, but at the same time, you are smoothening the surface of the fabric. And tentering is another process. It's, it's more of a mechanical finish where you hold the fabric on the salvages and usually when you look at a fabric salvage, you'll see pinholes. Um, the pinholes are usually because of the tentering process. So there are pins that are holding the edges and you stretch and straighten the fabric. So that uh, process straightens the grain of a fabric, dries it, and you can usually heat it in an oven. So tentering straightens the gray, dries the fabric, and makes it smooth. Um, and then, of course, you know, you go through inspections and repairs and so on. Uh, wool goes through other types of routine finishing steps, uh, like crabbing, decaying, uh, carbonizing, and pressing. Um, so this is something uh, unique to wool. You know, carbonizing is uh, removing any kind of plant matter on the wool by using sulfuric acid to kind of dissolve them. Uh, you can steam the wool, which is the pressing uh, part, or if you want to give it a smooth wrinkle-free finish, you want to do a steam ironing, which is called decading, and so on. So those are um, wool finishes. Now, like I said, there, there's a lot of use of water in finishing, um, and we sometimes cause water pollution because the water and chemicals in a finishing mill um, has to be 
you know, sometimes it goes into the environment and contaminates uh, water. So this is an issue. So people are coming up with different finishing techniques, which use less water, or instead of water, you can use foam. So it's a foam finish, uh, or you can use solvents um, and so on. So there are different developments to kind of decrease the cost and the environmental impact of finishing. Um, we also use enzymes to do finishes, and I'll talk about enzyme finishes when we get to like aesthetic finishes, um, because enzymes use less, I mean, if you use enzymes to do a finish, it uses less water, uh, but I'll talk about that more later. Uh, the plasma technology, for example, is an interesting one. So uh, you are, you know, if you are making the fabric water repellent, you could use this uh, super thin uh, layer that you apply on the fabric. It's, it's going to coat the fabric and make it waterproof, you know, so those are different techniques. Um, okay, so based on the purpose of finish, there are two different kinds of finishes, aesthetic versus functional. Aesthetic finishes change the appearance of the fabric, functional finishes change the performance of the fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and start with aesthetic finishes. Um, let's here. And I'm going to talk ab about the differences between aesthetic versus functional. So aesthetic finishes are any finishes that change the appearance of the fabric. And we usually change four things on a fabric. The luster, the shine, the texture, the hand or the drape of the fabric or the color of the fabric. All of these are aesthetic uh, finishes, right? And when I say hand, remember we define hand as like the way a fabric feels to the touch. So if a fabric uh, is soft versus stiff, you know, it's going to feel differently um, and so on. So we may be altering any of these things and that would be considered an aesthetic finish. Uh, a functional finish alters uh, things about the textile that enhances the comfort when you're wearing, you know, it affects the comfort uh, or ease of maintenance. So it may be maintenance related, like it makes it easier to wash that fabric. It makes it easier to iron that fabric. I like a wrinkle resistant finish, for example, would be, something that improves the ease of maintenance, uh, or it enhances the safety or protection. For example, you know, an antimicrobial finish would be something that enhances the safety of a fabric, uh, or enhances the durability of the fabric so that it lasts longer, right? So these are functional finishes. Um, I'm going to kind of summarize this whole thing to you. And then we're going to talk about the details. So when you talk about aesthetic finishes, we said we can alter the texture. So a burnout finish, embossed finish, plissé. I'm going to talk about each of these and what they look like. Uh, we'll talk about luster altering finishes, hand altering finishes, color altering finishes. And then we'll go into functional finishes and talk about how you can change the comfort of a fabric maintenance of the fabric, safety and protection and durability. Okay, we'll start with aesthetic. Uh, and again, aesthetic finishes can be done thermally by using heat, mechanical, mechanically by using mechanical action or chemically by using certain chemicals. And um, we're gonna start with luster altering finishes. Um, so luster finishes are general finishes that change the reflectance of light on a fabric. Uh, for example, calendaring, when you pass the fabric through rollers and the rollers are changing the appearance of the fabric in different ways. Either it smoothens the fabric surface so much that it becomes more lustrous, uh, or sometimes the calendars are heated. A glazed finish is a finish where um, the calendar is creating some kind of friction and it 
is making your fabric surface uh, glazed and giving you some kind of shine. Sometimes you can apply starches or wax or resin on the fabric surface as well during that process. Uh, so this gives you a glazed finish. So glazed chintz is a kind of fabric that goes through the glazed finish. Polished cotton goes through the glazed finish. So those are interesting uh, finishes that increase luster. Uh, this is an example of a glazed finish on a cotton fabric. This is a damask fabric and you see the shine on the fabric. Um, Serene so finish is similar to glazed, but you are using hot calendars in this way, and especially for thermoplastic fabrics, uh, because you can't create that kind of luster on a natural fabric like cotton, uh, but if it's a thermoplastic fabric, then the heat is going to almost melt I mean, it's not really melting. It's very close to melting temperature, but not really. So the, fab, the, the fibers get soft and you flatten them at that stage. So you are almost heat setting the fibers in a flat state. And that creates this uh, super glaze on the fabric. So uh, taffeta, satin fabrics sometimes go through the sore finish. This is a nylon fabric that went through that. Um, so the sore finish creates a wet look on the surface. Now, moire finish is uh, a little bit different. In this case, the fabric is passing through rollers, but flattening certain areas, creating this watermark design. And this is usually uh, done on a ribbed fabric, like a ribbed view fabric. Um, and you can create this kind of look. Like this is an acetate fabric with the moray pattern. Um, this is another one. Now this is an imitation. This is not actual moray, uh, but this is, you are doing that watermark print on the surface of the fabric in this case. Um, there are other finishes uh, that changes luster like plasticizing finish. Uh, or Shriner, when you have a roller engraved with fine lines for a deeper luster. Uh, so that's usually done on satin, sateen, damask, trickle fabrics. Uh, an embossed finish will uh, create that kind of texture. So it will affect the luster, but it will also affect the texture of the fabric. And this is usually done with thermoplastic fabrics. Um, so if you would iron the thermoplastic fabrics at a high temperature, you could flatten all of that design. Uh, a beetle finish, this also affects the luster. Um, it's mechanically flattening the yarns to give your fabric a little bit of an, a tighter look. Beetling is, uh, we talk about beetling if you guys remember. Uh, this is usually done on linen fabrics and to give it a lustrous look. So this is something that affects the luster uh, more than the texture actually. Uh, so beetle linen uh, has more luster than regular linen. And you can also do that on cotton to make the cotton fabric look like linen. This is a handkerchief made out of linen that has gone through the beetling. Um, we can also do finishes to improve the drape of a fabric or modify the drape. Uh, so if you want to give the fabric a more crisp uh, look, you can do a parchment, parchmentized uh, finish. So you're treating uh, any, any fabric that is cellulosic with certain acids and that creates this stiff, crisp look on the fabric. So organdy fabrics, for example, are kind of crisp fabrics um, they have been treated that way. Let me show you some examples. So this is a burnout design. So in a burnout finish, what you do is, this is really not about the drape, but more about the texture. Um, so on your fabric, if you have two different fibers, let's say you have acetate and you have some other, um, some other polyester maybe, 
uh, and you can apply acetone on this fabric and the acetone will dissolve all the acetate on this fabric. So if this is an acetate polyester blend, uh, the polyester is not going to be affected by acetone. But acetate, if you guys remember, we did this in our lab and we, um, we put some acetone on top of acetate fabric and it dissolved the fabric. So you're using that uh, characteristic of acetate to create a design like this that's called burnout. So this design here is created by burning or dissolving the acetate part of this fabric, but the polyester base fabric remains unaffected and uh, you can create a burnout design like that. You can also use sulfuric acid uh, if it is a, say, polyester cotton blend, because sulfuric acid will dissolve uh, cellulosic fibers, but it's not going to affect polyester. So you can create burnout designs like this. Um, this is another burnout design where you are burning the rayon uh, fibers by, this is usually a chemical action because you're dissolving the yarn. Um, so you have this fabric is done by using warp yarns that are alternating between polyester and rayon. So it's like rayon yarn, polyester yarn, rayon, polyester. So um, what happens is if you apply some kind of chemical here that dissolves rayon, but not polyester, then you get this kind of burnout look on the surface, okay? Um, this is a burnout design on a cur curtain. And you can see like these sections here are burnt out. Um, and these are where like it remained original. Um, this is another one with a burnout design. So, oops. So these are the areas where no chemical was applied, but these are the areas where chemical was applied and it dissolved those white fibers, but the base fabric is showing, okay? So if you take out the burnout fabric, you, you are going to see like, you know, these fibers are not dissolved in these sections because they use the chemical in other sections to create that design. This is another burnout design. Um, this is a yarn from a burnout design. So this was a polyester yarn wrapped with rayon and with the burnout you know the rayon dissolved polyester remained this is a velvet with a burnout uh, design so this is um, the velvet piles but in this part of the fabric they dissolved the piles of the fabric so you can see the base this is another burnout. Uh, so there are cotton yarns and polyester yarns, and they dissolve the cotton yarns in certain sections. So this area here is all polyester. This sections are cotton and polyester together. Uh, all right, uh, sizing can temporarily add a body and weight to the fabric and create a different amount of drape. Weighing is a finish we do on silk, especially for stiffness. Uh, we add metallic salts. I, I did talk about that when we talked about silk. Um, and then the finishes that we do for texture, you know, embossing, again, I said embossing can also change the luster of the fabric, but also uh, changes the texture. Uh, the pleating, finish, you know, sometimes fabrics are pleated. It's kind of a variation of embossed. You are pleating them and heat setting them in that way uh, to create, you know, that pleated look on the fabric. Now to do the embossing, you're using rollers that are engraved with whatever pattern you want on the fabric surface and you pass the fabric through it and it just creates this embossed look. Uh, this fabric, if you notice, you know, it is embossed. Uh, this fabric 
is ironed so you can see that like all the embossing was removed by ironing this is an embossed fabric again um, again you know with the embossed fabrics and depending on the fiber content if you wash it launder it iron it sometimes you can actually get rid of that embossed finish um, there are other finishes where you are creating a puckered surface uh, plissé is one of them uh, with plissé you are applying a chemical on the fabric in vertical stripes and that shrinks the fabric but other sections of the fabric doesn't shrink so you get this puckered look and you usually use sodium hydroxide for the shrinking so this kind of fabric is a plissé like this type of fabric is a plissé so uh, you are shrinking the fabric in a different way this is a plissé where you shrink these vertical sections but this section starts puckering because those vertical sections are shrinking. Okay, so that's a plissé. Uh, this is a wool plissé. Again, these are the sections that are shrunk and the rest of it puckers. Uh, flocked, flocking is another finish. Uh, this is adding fiber on a surface. This is usually a chemical finish. So you're using adhesives to attach and glue short fibers onto the surface of the fabric. So um, this one is a flocked fabric. This is the base and those little fibers are glued on the surface. These are not piles woven into the fabric. Um, this is a flocked fabric. So the flocking is done on these little um, flower designs here. Uh, this is a flocked dotted Swiss. So if you look at the magnified view, you know, those short fibers are glued on the surface and you create this kind of look. Uh, these are again, flocked uh, dots. Uh, this is a flocked doormat. So if you look at the magnified view, all of these are short fibers glued on the surface to create that look. Uh, this is a flocked, uh, Velox blankets. So this um, has this like plush surface. Uh, embroidery is a kind of finish. Uh, if you are doing, you know, stitching on a fabric, this is a mechanical finish technically. Um, there's shearing uh, of the piles, that's a finish. Brushing of the fabric surface is a finish. Like napping is actually brushing the surface of the fabric to create a fuzzy and soft uh, surface. So we do that with flannels, flannelettes, fleece fabrics. I'm going to try to show you some more pictures on iTextiles so that you can understand how that changes your fabric. So napping uh, looks more like a pile wheel and it just creates this fuzzy look on the surface. So you can see this, um, this is the face of the fabric that is napped. So you see the fuzziness. So you are uh, just, you know, brushing those yarns that has the short fibers. So napping is usually done on spun yarns, not filament yarns, because spun yarns have these short fibers. So when you brush it, they all make it fuzzy on the surface. And on the back, it's not napped. There's creping uh, that creates more like a creep look. Um, there's the coronizing, you know, sanding, suading finish. There are a lot of different finishes that change the hand of the fabric. Uh, they may create a softer fabric or a stiffer fabric, change the drape. Um, pleating is something that's kind of a basic one. So if it is a thermoplastic fiber, you can pleat the fabrics and then heat set them in that uh, pleat, pleated state, and then it will stay like that uh, all the time. So these are pleated polyester fabrics. Uh, they just, they will stay that way unless you increase the temperature to its glass transition temperature. Uh, these are uh, pleated fabrics. Again, you can see. 
Now, we also do washes, especially on denim fabrics. We do, we do chemical washes, enzyme washes, stone washing, you know, so washes alter the fiber surface. Sometimes it gives a more worn out look on the fabric. Uh, there are abrasive washes where we are um, abrasing the surface of the fabric with chemicals to create a worn out look. Uh, and enzyme wash uses enzymes to remove some of the fog on the surface or create a different look. Um, now let's talk about chemical wash. Um, this is a faded cotton denim. So this denim is washed to create this faded look, okay? Enzyme wash gives you a look more like this on the fabric surface, on the denim surface. Um, so these are enzymes that eat up the cellulase in a cellulosic material and denim is made out of cotton. So it has that kind of effect it makes your fabric surface a little softer as well. So enzyme washed jeans will have this softer touch. Uh, there's also abrasive washes. These are washes where you're using stones or uh, like the pumice stones that are um, kind of abrading the surface when you are just agitating the fabric surface with those stones. Uh, it's almost like creating this friction and abrading. So these are abrasive washed denim fabrics and you usually get this kind of look. I personally like the stone wash look on a denim uh, or you can do a sand wash. So these are the aesthetic finishes. I'm going to go over your eye textiles really quick. I'll just go over some of the things that we didn't cover or I'll show you some fabrics in eye textiles so you can picture some of those finishes a little bit better. Okay, so your eye textiles categorize finishes as three finishes, routine finishes, which I talked about, and then aesthetic finishes and functional finishes. So we talked about routine finishes like sizing, desizing, scouring, bleaching, and so on. Uh, we talked about all of these aesthetic finishes and so I'm gonna uh, mention a couple of these. So let's see. So this is calendaring. Um, calendaring is generally passing the fabric through these cylinders or rollers that are polishing your fabric surface. Um, and let's see, embossing, you know, these are embossed effects. You see this fabric has this embossed look. Moray pattern, we talked about how um, you apply heat on fabrics to create this kind of look, uh, especially for synthetic fibers, you can do that. This is the acetate moray fabric. Uh, this is a diploma cover with a moray lining. This is the imitation moray, which is not the real moray, uh, finish, but you're just printing the fabric with a more with a with that watermark pattern. So I mean, in this case, you can see that you have the pattern only on the face, not on the back. Glazing, we talked about glazing. This is another glazed uh, upholstery fabric. Soray finish, we talked about that, and we said it gives you a wet look, almost like the more, but not a watermark look, it's more like a wet look on the fabric. Soray means wax in French. So in this case, you're using waxes and hot cylinders to get that look. Uh, napping uses these rollers, which have these spikes on them, and they're brushing the uh, fabric surface to create a fuzz. So um, this is a Worsted wool flannel fabric and it's napped. This is a flannel fabric. You can see the napped surface. Flannelette, this is napped on one side, so the, the other side doesn't have the nap. Um, now, this fabric is a fleece. This is basically the material you have on your sweatshirts. Like any sweatshirt you have, it's knitted in this fleece design. You see the floats from knitting. And when you brush this side of the fabric, all the floats, the yarns from the floats, 
uh, all the short fibers kind of like get brushed into a fuzzy look. So this is before napping, this is after napping. Um, brushing is a similar thing to napping, uh, but brushed fabrics look a little bit different than napped fabrics. So this is a brushed cotton. You can see it close up, you know, it, it doesn't look napped necessarily. It's just brushing um, to kind of remove the short fibers. Sanding and suading, this gives a soft hem to the fabric or suading uh, gives more like a suede-like effect on the fabric. So um, you are passing fabrics through cylinders with some pressure, like they're abrasive cylinders. They are kind of creating that sanded look. We talked about flocking. This is electrostatic flocking. Um, you're still using an adhesive to glue those fibers on the surface, but you are doing that by creating a magnetic field where the fibers are attached to the surface. This is a flocked dotted Swiss. I think I showed you that. This is a flocked fabric. This gift box has it. Um, but if you just rub it out, you can remove the fibers that are glued on the base. This is a flocked fabric. We talked about burnout design. Uh, this is a burnout velvet. Uh, so you burnt out the piles on this velvet fabric in these sections and left it here to create that look. Uh, now this is a velvet that, remember the difference between velvet and flocked fabrics is velvet has piles that are uh, woven into the fabric. So by burning the piles in certain sections of this fabric, this is creating a burnout effect. Um, but if you don't have piles, but you are you have flocked surface, that means you glued the extra fibers onto the surface to make it look like piles. And then you can burn it out as well to create a burnout design, or you can just flock the fibers in that design to create that look. Uh, we talked about plissé. You know, we said we shrink certain areas of the fabric to create a puckered look. Plissé, pleating. Uh, this is a pleated polyester. This is heat set with these pleats. So it stays permanent. Uh, crinkling, I didn't talk about crinkling. This is uh, a method to create crinkled or crushed appearance on the fabric. Uh, and usually you mechanically distort the fabric. Uh, sometimes you use a resin and cure it in that state and it makes it look like that. This is a crinkled polyester blouse. Um, you can also do stiffening finishes. You can use starch um, and it will make your fabric a little bit stiffer. Uh, we talked about denim finishes. Um, I said we can use like chemical washes, enzyme washes. We can also do abrasive stone washes, sand washes. So they categorize those as wet processing versus dry processing. So anything that uses chemicals, it's a wet process. Anything that uses like uh, sanding or, you know, even when you are making holes and tears on your jeans, and that's a dry finish, dry processing. Um, so all of those are considered finishes. So when you buy denim at Joann's Fabrics, for example, it usually comes in this raw denim color. Um, but when, when they make jeans, usually the jeans go through a washing process to create this like worn out, distressed look on a denim. This is a stone washed denim. Um, this is a chemical washed denim. Uh, so the original color is this black color, but it's kind of, uh, you know, whitened out, I guess, washed out a little bit. Uh, we also do a finish to create this whiskered look behind the knees. Sometimes you have it in the front. Um, so it, give, it like simulates the wear on the fabric. It makes it look like it's been worn for a while, right? 
Okay, so that's the end of aesthetic finishes. In our next class, we're going to talk about functional finishes.